Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 9. Revelation, chapter 9. We'll start reading in uh, verse 16. The Bible says, And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, uh, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word, uh, for its warning uh, to us and to the world things to come. Lord, I thank you for uh, the salvation that you grant so freely and wonderfully through your only begotten Son, Jesus. And I pray that uh, you'd help us and, and empower us uh, and move us to share that great news with others so that they too may come to know him as Savior. We do ask all these things in his name. Amen. All right, so we're going to uh, be looking here um, we stopped off last week, uh, right about this this portion of scripture. Uh, we saw uh, coming on the scene 200 million uh, horsemen. That's a very large army, uh, very very large uh, group of people indeed. Uh, it's the combined power of uh, uh, demons and men acting in their own interest, and yet at the same time, they're carrying out. Uh, God's plan. God has uh, predicted this, and he has determined that this is what is going to happen. Um, so everything in the world at this point in Revelation chapter 9 is directly or indirectly <clears throat> under satanic control, or at the very least demonic control. Um, and uh, yet God is uh, maneuvering and not allowing them to do anything outside of his plan. So un unknowingly, unwittingly, they're falling right into the things that he has set in motion. Uh, this, the description of this army seems to be a supernatural army. In other words, it's not something that man has come up with or, or invented or built uh, or been a part of. Um, and certainly God has put supernatural armies in array before. Uh, <clears throat> these, the description here... This is not an ordinary horse, and, and it doesn't say that they are a horse. Um, and and uh, although it says, I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them in verse 17. Um, but uh, um, let's see. The description that as it continues in verse 17 thus I saw the horses in the vision and then that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions so now it's, it's telling us that you know I saw something looks like horses but the heads were not horses heads they were more like a lion's head um, and uh, uh, out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone and by these three meaning the fire the smoke and the brimstone it says a third part of men were killed so we talked about this uh, um, you know a third part of humanity we have close to eight billion people on planet earth right now a third part of them being killed would be uh, somewhere around 2.6 billion and this happens in a relatively short period of time um, so the, the whole time of tribulation is just seven years. 
and and this is going to be in a a segmented part of that seven year period so it's not going to be spread out over the whole seven years um and and so uh uh anyways they, they killed a thousand or i'm sorry a third of of humanity here um so as i said these are not ordinary horses they have a body like a horse their heads were like lion's heads it says that their tail um well, it says that out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone uh and that those those three things were used to kill a third of the population in uh, verse 19 it says for their powers in their mouth and in their tails and it says their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And so, again, they've got power on the head. The head uh, out of the mouth spews out fire, smoke, and brimstone. And that's, uh, that's deadly. It kills a third of, of the population. But it also has tail uh, power on the other end, in the tails, uh, like that of a serpent. And uh, on the end of the tail, it looks like there's a head also. And they use them to hurt people as well. So we have the sulfurous smoke. Fire issues from their mouth, the serpent sting in their tails, and they're they're killing anyone and everyone that crosses their paths that that uh, that they can. The riders themselves have breastplates of fire, jacinth, and brimstone. Jacinth, jacinth is a a precious stone. It's mentioned back in the book of Exodus. It was one of the stones that was to be included uh, on the breastplate of the high priest. Uh, uh, but anyways, they. Uh, uh, breastplates of fire, jacinth, and brimstone that kind of matches uh, uh, the theme uh, of the horses themselves also. Uh, it's going to be a horrible place that this world turns into. Uh, literally when, uh, and I don't want to say hell has opened up, but, but in a way it is. The bottomless pit has been opened and these fallen angels have been released. Uh, they've been bound there for somewhere around 6,000 years now, and uh, uh, they're angry, they're hateful, and they're, they're bitter, and they're evil. Um, and, you know, I, I, I remember reading this, and when I first started studying the book of Revelation years, many years ago, uh, I'd read events like this, and, you know, showing God's judgment upon this planet, and the woes and the angels and the vials and the trumpets and everything. And, and we see right here in this, in this occasion, a third of the world's population is killed. And, and yet we get to, down to verse 21, it says, neither repented they. Uh, and it says the people still didn't repent. And, and how could anyone help but be a Christian? And, you know, God's wrath and God's judgment is being poured out on the, on the wickedness of this planet uh, here in these chapters. And, and yet it, there seems to be uh, said again and again and again, they didn't repent. They didn't repent. They didn't. And one day I came across a verse that says, the goodness of God leadeth men to repentance. And, and it, it dawned on me, it occurred to me, that's why they're not seeing God's goodness. Right now is the age of grace. Right now. God's goodness is available. At this point in, in Revelation 9, the only thing there is mercy. It's just mercy. And it's, it's by his mercy that it's only one-third of the world population that gets killed. Uh, and, and so even in, in the pouring out, outpouring of his judgment, there's still mercy involved there as only one-third are affected by it. Uh, you know, men don't really believe that it's it's going to be that way. Because if they did, they would repent. And so a lot of people, they say, well, the Bible's, it's just, uh, it's not real. It's not true. And and they use that to excuse their, their, uh, their choices in life, their behavior, uh, their sinfulness. And, and they don't want to repent. They don't want to turn to God. They don't want to admit. Uh, and that's why the... the the account of the, the flood in Noah's day is so so vehemently attacked by the world is because that shows that God is willing to judge wrong and judge sinful man on a global scale. 
And that nobody, you know, the sinners don't want to be held accountable. They want to be able to do whatever they want to do and have no consequences involved in it. And yet that flood tells us there are consequences. There is going to be a, a, a time of accountability and of reckoning. And, and, and so and, and we get to this book of Revelation and we find that in these chapters, that's exactly what's happening there. Uh, but we know that this is the word of God. These things are going to happen just as they've been written. Um, it's not somebody's imagination. It's not something that, that a fellow named John decided to come up with and write down uh, to scare people. It's John actually saw these things and they were shown to him by God himself. Uh, by God's mercy, only a third of the world population is killed. There are those who were not killed. Uh, by the way, God is never delighted in the death of the wicked. A third of the population of the world is dead and gone. But the remaining two-thirds are not ready to repent. And that's where the human heart is. It's, the Bible tells us it's deceitful above all things. You know, our, our world has gone through, you know, in, in relatively recent history, two world wars and well over a hundred lesser wars since then. I don't know if we could even begin to count the loss of lives in, in all of those wars, battles and policing actions, whatever you want to call them. And yet the world is more wicked now than ever. Instead of repentance, sin is increasing. Punishment in and of itself will not by itself lead men to repent. And the severest of God's judgments uh, upon guilty men don't soften the rebellious hearts. And, and that's what's increasing now is, is rebellion. Uh, there was a time when uh, rebellion was dealt with in children, and now it's it's not addressed, it's not dealt with directly, uh, it's excused, it's allowed, it's even expected. And people say, oh, they're just being a teenager, they'll grow out of that. No, what's happening is that rebellion is becoming cemented in their heart during that time, and then as adults, they'll be rebellious in other ways, and, and uh, they may not be able to, to rebel against laws uh, and feel like they can get away with it, but they will rebel spiritually. And in fact, uh, uh, what's happening now and has been for some time is the rebellion against the laws is getting to where we just change the laws. You know, uh, years ago, somebody said, we're going to declare war on drugs. And they made a, a declaration of war. Uh, and now the song is, well, since we're not having a good time, we're not having good success doing away with drugs, we're going to legalize them because there's a lot of people that rebel against that law. So we're just going to change the law. And, and uh, I remember when Bill Clinton was president, Janet Reno decided, she said she would like to see uh, drugs decriminalized, uh, drugs that are, that are illegal right now. And then uh, a few months after she made that statement, it was found out that her son was uh, accused and found to be a drug dealer. And I looked at my wife and said, that's why she wanted to decriminalize. She wanted him to have a legitimate business. And now we fast forward to today and states are rebelling against federal law and decriminalizing drugs left and right. And then uh, they're not just decriminalizing them, but they're making them actually legal and now uh, politicians in D.C. are talking about changing the federal law and allowing these drugs to be legal. And, and uh, uh, the rebellion is, is increasing and increasing. Even in hell, uh, men and women will manifest bitter defiance against all that is holy. The Bible talks about there being gnashing of teeth. And that's an expression of, of hatred from the unregenerate heart. God's judgment upon Pharaoh, if you'll recall, uh, did not necessarily soften his heart. Uh, he, he, would, 
he would uh, say he was going to let the people go and then his heart would harden all over again and he'd say, nope, you can't go, you can't go, you can't go. And um, here in the book of Revelation, God is allowing us to look into the future and, and get a glimpse of the extent that wickedness is going to be prevailing in this whole world at that time. Uh, more people than ever will worship devils. Look at uh, verse 20. It says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. So they're continuing to worship devils uh, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. So some of them were worshiping devils. Some of them said, I'm just going to carve something out of wood or, or chisel it out of a, a rock or make it out of metal or something like that and brass and stone and silver and gold and and uh, uh, they decided to worship those things and that's not just a matter of uh, I'm going to carve something out a little statue and I'm going to bow down to that think of all the things that we have that are made out of out of uh, metal some people worship their cars They'll wash and wax and polish their car every Sunday instead of being in the house of God. Some people worship their lawns and they'll cut that grass and they'll worship that and they'll do it, uh, some, you could use the term religiously, but they won't darken the doors of God's house. They won't want to have anything to, to do with Christianity. And they have, uh, they have allowed, you know, anything that you allow to come between you and God you have placed a greater importance on that item, on that person, or on that place. Uh, that has become your idol. And God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. In the very, very beginning uh, of giving commandments, that was where he started. And so, uh, <clears throat> more people than ever will be worshiping devils. And you look at... Uh, how how witchcraft is being portrayed uh, by Hollywood and and sorcery and magic and how how popular that's become and the interest that it generates amongst people and amongst young people especially uh, and and no wonder it's increasing and increasing and increasing. Satan is always pursuing and after the worship of mankind. We can look find that in Matthew chapter four. Uh, when he was trying to get even Jesus, the very Son of God, to bow down and worship him. And, and Jesus declined and he quoted scripture to him. And he said, no, uh, we're, the Bible says we're only supposed to worship God. And uh, uh, of course, the Apostle Paul himself denounced it. Uh, <clears throat> and so we have, we have wicked spirits, unholy in character, belonging to Satan's kingdom and and they seek to control the minds and the very actions and acts, the bodies of living people. And you, you consider when all restraint is taken from the earth at the rapture. Right now, it is the presence of God's people the, who are inhabited by God, the Holy Spirit himself. That presence right here is keeping a lot of things from happening in this world. And by, by that, I mean a lot of evilness, a lot of wickedness. Uh, it's, it's all being restrained right now. But when that which is restraining is taken up at the rapture, well, we can imagine the this, this staggering worldwide influence that will be had over men by demons. Uh, <clears throat> and it'll be a revival of idolatry all across the planet. Uh, then we see a list of evil practices that they get involved in. And they correspond to the, the godless nature and character of the, the world's dominant religion during the period of the tribulation. Look at verse uh, 21. Neither repented they of their murders. They didn't care. They didn't care. Murder is going to be going on. It's going to be rampant. And it's going to be people, it's going to be a, a situation where people just, they don't care. They don't feel bad about it. They don't feel guilty about it. 
They don't feel like it's they've done anything wrong, that they needed to have turned from it. They just don't care. Nor are their sorceries. Now, that's a very interesting word. Because if you look that word up in, in the Greek, and I know we have the Bible in English and, and everything, but, uh, but this is truly an interesting. The word for sorceries is pharmakeia. We get our word pharmacy or pharmaceutical from it. So it's not just referring to witchcraft and, and uh, uh, you know, Harry Potter and the like. It's, it's a tremendous amount of drug use. Now, folks, there's, been, there's more people under the influence of drugs right now than ever before in the history of mankind. And, and I don't mean just an aspirin. I'm talking about mind-altering drugs. And some of them are illegal, and some of them are prescribed by the doctor. And you look at uh, uh, your commercials. I mean, you, you can hardly watch a TV show without seeing a tremendous amount of commercials for, for what they call medicines, drugs, if you will. Uh, and, and that's, you know, you won't see the news agencies, the news stations, speaking out against the drug companies, not very much, because the drug companies spend millions and mil hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising on those stations. And they say, hey, listen, if you're going to expose us for what we are, if you're going to tell the, everybody the truth about what we're doing, we'll just pull our money and, and y'all will go bankrupt. You have to make do without, without all that money that you're selling us in advertising. And, and so they don't. Every once in a while, there'll be a doctor, uh, have a TV show, and when he starts uh, finding out what's going on in the drug industry and he speaks out against it, all of a sudden he doesn't have a TV show anymore and, and isn't, uh, uh, isn't invited back uh, for interviews or anything like that. And so that's going on. Yes, there's a lot of uh, uh, increased interest in witchcraft, but there's also a, a, a severe amount of these mind-altering drugs being prescribed. And you look at the side effects and it says, uh, uh, here's a drug. If you're discouraged, if you're down, if you're sad, if you're lonely, take this drug. And be careful because it might make you want to kill yourself. Side effects include, and, and you start reading the side effects, and well, this thing that's supposed to make me happy will make me happy to kill myself, it seems like. And, and that, listen, something to, to be very, very careful about is, is all of these drugs that are being passed around and, and, and man has made an idol out of the pharmaceutical companies and they seek, they seek them first before seeking God and, and his way. I like what Dr. Streeter said. He said, you were not created in a lab. He said, when God created Adam, he didn't put him in a lab. He didn't put him in a hospital. He put him in a garden. And I, I firmly believe that God has put everything in nature. I don't think we've discovered it all uh, that we need, but I think everything is there that our bodies need to, to be healthy. Uh, let's, uh, let's go on. So they didn't repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication. Here's another sin, sexual sin, very, very rampant. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's become almost completely accepted throughout society now. It's, and, and if you speak out against uh, sexual sin, well, you're called old-fashioned, prude, judgmental, hateful. You are a hate monger if you speak out against it. Good night. Uh, people are, are finding out that uh, teachers of small children, I'm talking about kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and third grade, uh, teachers were talking to their students in their classroom about sexuality and sexual things, grooming them, if you will. And, and Florida said, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to make that. How, how horrible that that has to be made against the law, that there's a big enough problem that they said, we need to pass a law to stop this from happening. And you know what? A bunch of teachers said, well, if that's going to be against the law, if I can't talk to children about sex, I'm going to quit. And I say, good riddance. You need to be out of there. 
You, you don't need to be uh, trying to sexualize a, a child. You don't need to be involved in it at all. And, and uh, uh, people say, well, you, you can't speak out against that. I absolutely can, and I will, and I am. Because the Bible says that's one of the things, that's one of the wickedness, that's one of the evil things. And, and uh, keep in mind, these are things that are going on when there is no more restraint in this world. And he says it's fornication is a big one there. And then he goes on and, and it says, nor of their thefts. Boy, how much stealing is going on. And, that, and we could go on and on and on about this and so many ways in which stealing is taking place and it's becoming commonplace and in some ways acceptable. It's an interesting thing. I would, uh, I would uh, challenge anybody to show me where the Constitution says it's fine for the government to take money from this group of people and just arbitrarily give it to this group of people. And, and I mean just take it by threat of force, imprisonment, and just give it. But they do. They do. Now, if you and I tried to do that, It'd be called theft. It'd be called robbery. Anyhow, just something to think about and look up. You say, well, those people are hungry. Well, there's, I understand that. There's, there's things that can be done uh, that doesn't involve stealing. But the, the world continues to wax worse and worse. And it'll continue to do that. And what we're seeing now is just a little taste. Things are going to be much, much, much worse during the tribulation period. Next week, we'll begin with chapter 10, and we'll get into the, uh, the introduction to it, but I encourage you to read through chapter 10 in preparation for next week. Uh, it's not very long at all, 11 verses, and uh, we'll get started then. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and for preserving this information for us uh, that we may uh, be warned about it that we could share the good news in contrast to uh, what all will be taking place uh, on down the road i thank you for your grace right now and mercy and your love for us and uh, your promise to take us out of this world uh, before your judgment falls upon it Help us to be good witnesses and good testimonies for you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.